Greetings, everyone. I'm here with Burn designer, John Moffat. He's gonna walk us through how to set up and play Burned using our tabletop simulator mod. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, so Burn is a two-player, asymmetrical, neon noir, spy versus spy kind of thing. Um, each player is going to have slightly different rules, but they're gonna share the same map and, and use some of the same combat mechanics. We have on one side, uh, the evil agency, see there they're represented by seven different agents we have some generic operatives we have then the director who is the target that has to be killed and the other side of the board we have the burned asset who's the good guy or maybe that's the the evil burned asset and the good agency we let you decide the middle of the board you can see that there are a number of face-up location cards of different colors that forms sort of the board of the game and there's a little different in how it works than traditional board games in that the position of the card on the board on the table doesn't matter at all. You could switch those cards around, wouldn't make any difference. The only thing that matters is the color. So you've got yellow, pink, blue, and green. And each of those cards will have one or more colors. In the center there, you see the plaza has all four colors. And what that means is that colors that have cards that have the same color are adjacent, and those that don't share a color are not. So there's no difference between going from one end of the table to the other. It's just switching colors or not switching colors is all that matters. So what I'll do is I'll kind of walk through how the agency works first, because they're a little bit simpler, and then that'll help to explain how the burned asset works. Now, the uh, agency is going to have seven operatives. And if you take a look closely, you'll see they have different little words on their sides. It indicates what they're currently doing. Are they running? Are they sneaking? Are they in overwatch mode, which is sort of a guard mode? And then stunned is a status that the burned asset can put on them. They don't want to be in stunned, but they won't have a choice sometimes. When the game starts, all these agents are going to be face down. And they're all going to be in sneak at the grove. On the agency's turn, all they're gonna do is move every or any agents they want to. And then they're going to search all the locations where they have agents, whether they moved or not. Now, an agent, again, we said, all that matters for here is color. So an agent goes as far as they want. They can go from Grove all the way across here. They can go all the way across to here. They can go this far. They can go as far as they want. The difference is that when they go somewhere that shares the same color, they are sneaking. And when they go somewhere where they don't share a color, they are turned to run. The reason that matters, well, thematically, they're moving really quickly, they're banging into stuff, they're making a lot of noise. But what it's going to matter for is that the burned assets equipment, as you'll see in a second, work a lot better when agents run. So the agency is going to avoid running whenever they can. But that's as all the agency does in their turn. It's pretty simple. You move all your agents wherever you want, and then you search all locations where you have agents. Searching means I'm going to try to find the burned asset and then hopefully kill him. Agents that don't move, that you know, the ones that you choose not to move for that turn, are going to be left in overwatch mode. And that's basically like holding ground, guarding, covering with your weapon. I'll show you in a minute what that means, but it essentially is going to lock cards face up. Now the agency, sorry, the burned asset on the other side works a little bit differently. You, you'll see that there's no card here that goes around the map. The agency doesn't move, the burned asset doesn't move around the map, but the burned asset has instead an identical set of location cards that matches the ones that make up the map. And with the the burned asset's going to do, instead of moving on the board, is going to always have one of these face down as their current location. Instead of moving people around and searching on their turn, the burned asset is going to use equipment. So on the turn, they use equipment, then they get to move around. Equipment is sort of broken into three main categories. We have weapons. In this starter set, you can see there's a pistol, there's a knife, and there's a bolt action. Those are used for trying to kill <laughs> the uh, agency, agency's agents. Then there are utility cards. Here this starting set, we have the smoke bomb and the binoculars. Those are used for revealing or distracting the agency. And then this kit has a trap as well. This is a Claymore. Traps work slightly differently. On the burned assets turn, what they're going to do is pick one of two equipment that they have. So each turn, the burned asset will have two equipment cards in front of them that they've chosen to use this turn. They'll reveal the one they're using. They'll read the text and they'll do what it says. 
Again, weapons are trying to kill uh, agents. Utility things are revealing agents or hiding themselves or doing things. Traps, instead of being revealed, are just going to go in the location and be set there to go off later. The equipment will tell how they work, who they can target. So for instance, the bolt action might say that you can target running agents or agents at your aim location. So this is one of the reasons why the agency doesn't want to run. Whenever the uh, target keyword is used, that's just indicating how many cards from the combat deck the burned asset will draw to try to kill that agent. When the agency locates the burned assets location or finds them and starts fighting them, they use the exact same mechanic. They draw a combat card for each agent they have and see if they get any wounds. After the burned asset has used their equipment, they will then get to move. Again, the burned asset isn't on the board, but they do have that location card that shows where they currently are. And they move the simil in a similar way to the agency in that they can run or they can sneak. They can go to any location they want, but if it's the same color, they're sneaking. And if it's a different color, they're running. When the burned asset sneaks, they just pick up their card, put down a new card, say nothing, super sneaky, silent is the grave. When the burned asset runs, however, they can still pick any card they want, but they have to declare to the agency which color they're running to. They don't have to tell them the name of the location or exactly which one, but the color. So for instance, the burned asset might pick up the location, say I'm running to blue, and they can pick any of the blue cards from their hand and put it face down as run. This gives the agency a little bit of information, but not everything they need. The burned asset will then pick their equipment they want to use next turn. So you have to kind of think ahead and plan for what, what contingencies you want. And then you'll also choose a location card to be your aim location. And that's another secret location where you're choosing to essentially prep. And if you guess correctly, a lot of the equipment, for instance, again, that bolt action will let you get a free shot at someone who is your aim location. So the burned asset is constantly trying to think, what do equipment do I need in my next turn? And where do I think the agents are going to go? Because I want to guess that as my aim location. The combat deck over here has two kinds of cards in it. We have misses and we have hits. And again, the agency and the burned asset use the same deck for, for their combat. The agent that finds the burned asset will pull one card for every single agent that found the, the burned asset. So every time you search location and that's the burned assets location, you draw one card for each agent there. Every hit result is a hit on the agent, oh, sorry, the burned asset. And similarly, when the burned asset uses their weapon and draws cards, they'll draw cards equal to the target number in their card, and every hit is a killed agent. Agents who are hit are killed. When the burned asset is hit, we have these wound tokens here. And we'll simply take one of those wound tokens and put it on the location where the burned asset was hit. We also have these overwatch tokens you see here. I mentioned that agents can sometimes overwatch. So if an agent chooses to overwatch, they're going to put one of those Overwatch tokens on the location they are searching. And that will lock that location face up. In fact, so does the Wound token. Wound tokens and Burn and uh, Overwatch tokens both lock locations face up. The Burned Asset hasn't lost that card, but it's face up now until, in the case of the Overwatch token, the agent is gone, killed, leaves, scared off. Or, in the case of the Wound, it's there forever. So big picture wise, what's happening is the burned asset is gradually eliminating agents trying to get their way to the director and kill him. As soon as the director dies, the agency loses. And the agency is trying to put four wounds on the burned asset. And every time they get a wound on the burned asset, the burned asset is going to have more and more cards locked face up, losing some secrecy. Turns go back and forth. Again, the agency in their turn moves their agents, searches everywhere they are. And the burned asset will use an equipment, move to a new location, and then choose equipment for the next turn. They alternate back and forth until either the director is dead, in which case the burned asset wins, or the burned asset gets their fourth wound and is dead, in which case the agency wins. Hope that explained most of the points in the game. In fact, that's almost all the rules. It's pretty straightforward once you get the hang of the locations and such. Uh, thank you for watching.